guys, welcome back. Let's start off with chapter 15, sensory pathways and somatic pathways. What are things, some things that we want to know for these pathways? Well, sensory, typically, what I want you guys to memorize is whenever you think of sensory pathways, it has three neurons in a row. So we're going to write this down. So whenever you think of sensory, and we have two specific pathways that we're going to memorize, so I'm going to make a list. So it's three or more neurons in a row. What they call it is first order neuron, second order neuron, third order neuron. And remember I said memorize SADMEV? Well, here's where SADMEV is utilized. We're gonna memorize the different specific sensations associated with these pathways. But SADMEV will help you tremendously with the final exam. So motor, when you think of motor, it's two in a row. So the difference between these is sensory has three in a row, the motor has just two. It's divided into upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron. Let's get back to this. <clears throat> so again, somatic motor, right? This is MEV, this is SAD, and again, this is um, MEV, right? General sensation, SAD, so it's ascending information. This is the type of information that's ascending to the brain. Temperature, pain, touch, pressure, vibration, proprioception. We're going to memorize all of these uh, for the two different pathways, and you have to know which one is associated with each. <clears throat> Sensation, perception, special senses, we'll, we'll cover a little bit later. But if you notice, these are all cranial nerves, right? What cranial nerve is this? Cranial nerve one, what is this? Cranial nerve two. What about gustation? Well, it's actually two nerves. It's the anterior two-thirds of the tongue versus the posterior one-third of the tongue. So the anterior two-thirds two of the tongue is controlled by cranial nerve seven, and the back of the tongue is cranial nerve nine. And we already know this, right? Because we did the whole gag reflex, and then we said, mm, that's a part of facial expression. So the anterior two-thirds and the posterior one-third for taste are related to cranial nerves nine and um, seven and nine. Equilibrium and balance and hearing, that's both cranial nerve eight, right? So continue on. I'm going to slow down on the areas that I want you guys to highlight. What is adaptation? So here's one thing that you have to remember. We're going to talk about two different types of receptors, and I just want you to memorize um, what I put on the board. So adaptation is the ability to um, acclimate to a certain environment. In this case, when you put on your shirt in the morning, right, maybe you feel it at first, but over time what happens? You don't feel it anymore. Why? You've adapted to the sensation, right? So you're... you're um, tolerance to it, right, um, has gone up, and your sensitivity to it has gone down. So here's what we're looking at for adaptation. Tonic receptors, their ability to adapt is slow. So they call it slow, slowly adapting tonic receptors, and rapid adapting phasic receptors. So which one do you think you would find, let's say, in the skin? Well, didn't I say it early in the morning? You put on your shirt and you notice that it's there, but as soon as you put it on for a short while, you've already adapted to the sensation? Well, your skin has rapid adapting phasic receptors. What about slowly adapting? Well, your blood pressure takes a little bit while, uh, takes a little while to reset. So your baroreceptors inside of your neck and inside of the aorta are slowly adapting tonic receptors. So blood pressure receptors are associated with slow adaptation. And rapid adaptation is skin. So these two are what you're gonna memorize. Right, and let's classify. So proprioceptors, what did I say they were? Over the two, one was in the muscle, the other was in the tendon. So proprioceptors monitor muscle function. One more time. Proprioceptors monitor muscle function. And what are the two types? Muscle spindle fibers and Golgi tendon organs. Which, ones, uh, which one detects stretch in a muscle? Spindle. Which one detects tension in a tendon? Golgi. So they're, they sound the same, but remember the location is different. And the specific response is different, but for you guys, just remember stretch in a muscle, tension in a tendon, and you should be fine. So proprioceptors monitor muscle function, and what are the two types? Muscle spindle fiber and Golgi tendon organ. Good. 
Nociceptors, memorize these. This is called bold words, right? So nociceptors are for pain, thermoreceptors for temperature, mechanical for physical distortion or movement. So if I push against the skin, that's physical change, right? So that's mechanoreceptor. Chemoreceptor for chemical. So if I have acid in the, well, let's not say acid. It is acid, but a pH change inside of the, the blood, your chemoreceptors will detect that change. Nociceptors pain, right? Uh, thermoreceptors temperature, mechanical physical distortion. Tactile is touch, so these are different types of mechanoreceptors. Tactile for touch, baroreceptor for pressure, proprioceptor monitor muscle function, right? And what are the two? They were muscle spindle fiber and Golgi tendon organs, good. There's actually three, but what I want you guys to memorize is the two that I keep repeating over and over again. Tactile for touch, right? Fine touch and pressure receptors. We'll cover the difference. And then you have crude touch. So remember, there's the fine touch or two-point discrimination. There's a crude touch. And then six types. So free nerve endings. Memorize that these are pain receptors. So free nerve endings, um, they're associated with pain reception. The next one that I want, Merkel's discs. We covered this in skin, so I'm not going to repeat that again. But we are going to memorize Meisner's. Meisner's, we want to know light touch. Meisner's is light touch. These are the key words that I will use in the exam, and they are what you guys need to know. Light touch. Okay, let's see the next one. And even though it says vibration, there's a lot of crossover between all of the different receptors. Um, if you can just remember maybe their location so that you can kind of figure it out. So Meisner's, Merkel's is up in here, Meisner's is here. So it's still close to the surface, but it's not as close as the other ones. Um, Pacinian, Pacinian is wrapped in a layer. So in order to get it, you have to apply deep pressure. So deep pressure for Pacinian. So P, Pacinian, <clears throat> is pressure. And then the last one, Ruffini, is rough vibration. So I want you guys to remember vibration. There's a lot of crossover, but these are the terms I'm going to be using to describe each one. So this one is Pacinian, right? It's wrapped in layers. And it's deep inside of the, um, the reticular layer of the skin. So you need to apply deep pressure in order to affect it. And then you have Ruffini. Ruffini is also deep, but just remember it's associated with uh, vibration. It shows little or no adaptation. Okay. So here we go again. What are the different types of receptors and what sensations are they associated with? We just went over them. Um, simple, unencapsulated, and I'm not going to ask that. I'm not going to ask encapsulated. These are not two, so don't worry about these. But what's the function of Meisner's? We said light touch. Merkel's is found in the epidermis. Um, that one is for fine touch as well. And then Ruffini is deep. We want vibration. I want you guys to know this. And there's little to no adaptation. What's the function of Pacinian? Pacinian for pressure. Adaptation of a sensory receptor. What is adaptation? The ability to change right in a, a certain environment so adaptation of a receptor that means their tolerance goes up or their threshold their threshold goes up and their sensitivity goes down so let's write a relationship so if i have <clears throat> threshold and threshold is the point at which you have to hit in order for an action potential to um, be triggered that's essentially your sensation right that's message and it's opposite relationship to sensitivity. So the more sensitive you are, the lower your threshold to, to something is. So if you're sensitive to pain, then your threshold to pain is low. But if you're not sensitive to pain, then your sensitivity is low and your threshold, your tolerance to pain is high. So adaptation is the ability to, I guess, adapt to an environment or your shirt. So your shirt's a really good example. So if you adapt to your shirt, your threshold goes up, your sensitivity to it goes down. That's a basic concept of adaptation. 
And then what do we have? We have what's the structure of a nerve? You guys should be able to go back and do that on your own. What is sensory also called? That's sad mev. Um, this is sad and this is mev. This is ascending and this is descending, right? <clears throat> Baroreceptors, what is that? That was pressure. What are proprioceptors? Monitor muscle function, right? The three that they have listed are not the three I'm going to test you on. We're just going to test you on muscle spindle and Golgi tendon. And then Golgi tendon, you guys have that. Chemoreceptors detect chemical changes like pH changes, acid or base changes, or even oxygen. Um, carotid bodies and aortic bodies. This one's found in the neck, right? There's a carotid artery here and then the aortic arch comes across here. So carotid is on this side and it's also on this side. And the bodies detect changes in chemicals, but the sinus detects, the sinus detects changes in pressure. So one more time, there's two different types of receptors found in the two blood vessels that primarily supply the brain. The first one, the aortic arch, has bodies. Whenever you think bodies, you think chemical, right? Maybe there's pheromones, you can remember it that way. And whenever you think sinus, a sinus, when you think, oh my God, I have sinus pressure. So just think sinus and pressure because these are your baroreceptors for blood pressure regulation. And then up here, um, I'm not drawing it uh, I'm going to erase the connection point and just say that this is the carotid, right? So technically it's supposed to look like this. <clears throat> okay, so these are the carotid sinus. And also the carotid bodies. What are the bodies for? Chemical. What are the sinuses for? Pressure. So sinus. Pressure, bodies, chemical. Memorize that. First order, second order, third order neuron. Is it sensory or motor? Sensory. We know it's three in a row, right? So sensory pathways. There are two that I'm going to uh, require that you know, and here are the sensations that we need to know. So you're going to know spinal thalamic, and you're also going to know posterior column. But I don't call it posterior column because other textbooks don't. Um, posterior can also be called dorsal. So we're going to use a dorsal version. And then spinal cerebellar, actually, you guys should know this off the bat. So from the spine to the cerebellum, is it going up or is it going down? So the word itself starts with spine and it ends with cerebellum. So it's an upward ascending pathway. Is that sensory motor? It's sensory, right? So it takes information to the cerebellum. What is the cerebellum for? Unconscious proprioc or balance, coordination, and unconscious proprioception. Who are the two proprioceptors? We said it was muscle spindle fibers and Golgi tendon organs. Woohoo! So you already know the functions for that pathway. But let's go over the functions for these other two pathways that you guys have to know. So the first one is STALS, spinal thalamic anterior lateral system. <laughs> so spinal thalamic anterior lateral system. Don't confuse this with a ALS or Lou Gehrig's. Okay, we're going to talk about Lou Gehrig's afterwards when I, when I have the questions for you guys. So SDLS, spinal thalamic. You just have to know spinal thalamic. Those of you going on to medical school, ALS is going to be something that you will come across as well. Just remember that these two pathways are connected. And then DCML. DCML. You have to know well, dorsal column. Dorsal column on your textbook is referred to as posterior column. Same thing. Dorsal and posterior are the same meaning. And then medial lemniscus, you don't have to know that either unless you're going to med school. So dorsal column, medial lemniscus, the spinal thalamic, ALS. Oh my goodness, how am I going to memorize this? Well, there's three sensations associated with this one, five sensations associated with this one. We'll start off with the easier one. Patsy. Ooh, Patsy. So here are the three sensations. Pain, temperature, crude touch. Pain, temperature, crude touch. And the other one has five sensations. It is poor, very, dumb, silly, guy, or girl. Whoever you want to put there, but we're going to say guy because I'm a girl. <laughs> so we're going to say DCML has poor, very, dumb, silly, girl. Oh, poor, very, dumb, silly, guy. All right? And STLS has Patsy. Oh my goodness, how am I going to keep this all in, in order? The reason why I use D in DCML is because there's a D, so I can connect this mnemonic with this pathway because of the D. There's a D in this one, there's a D in that one. And how do I connect this one? 
Well, there's a T in this one and there's a T in that one. So that's an easy way to connect it so I don't confuse the two. Because um, I used to do it where I was like, okay, memorize all the mnemonics. And then sometimes you go back and you think, ah, what was that for? So you have to make a connection. And here's the connection. D for D, T for T. So spinothalamic pathway. What are the three sensations associated with spinothalamic? Pain, temperature, food, touch. One more time. What are the three sensations associated with the spinothalamic pathway? Pain, temperature, food, touch. One more time. Spain, uh, spinothalamic, three sensations. Pain, temperature, food, touch. What about DCML? Well, dorsal column is poor, very dumb, silly guy. Okay, let's go over what that means. P. Oh, there's two types. There's one for the muscle spindle and the other one for the Golgi tendon. So you can tell me this is a proprioceptor, right? What is V? Mm, vibration, right? And D. D is an easy one, but we're going to describe it. So it's called two-point discrimination, and that's um, essentially a fine touch, but it's a very specific uh, ability. So if I grab two um, toothpicks, right, and I stick two of them on your back, and I bring them close together, over time, they're going to start to feel like one sensation, like one, um, like they're actually one point, but they're two points. The closer you get to your hand, so if I put those two points, the same to distance on your back that I put on your finger, which one do you think you're going to have the ability to distinguish between on your finger, right? Because you have more nerve endings in your finger, you're going to be able to detect the separation between the two much more clearly. So two point discrimination is the ability to distinguish between two points as they get closer and closer together. Because there's more nerve endings, that means there's more sensation. And what's more painful, um, a scratch on the back or um, hangnail? Be honest hangnail I know for me I'm like ah hangnail scratch my back that's fine but hangnail ow oh, right so two-point disc discrimination and then s stereognosis so everybody close your eyes and now reach into your bag find your keys don't look for it just find it okay your ability to distinguish shape without looking and determining it by your the the, the way it feels in your hand is called stereogenosis. Okay, so stereo gno, it's actually stereognosis. The G is kind of silent. Stereognosis, but do you gno? Right? So, GNO, GNO means to know. So, the condition of knowing what the shape is based on your ability to, to touch it without seeing it. And this last one, when a friend is writing on your back during class, right? You're trying to, to tell your friend what you want after class. And they don't understand what you're saying. So, you grab their hand, then you start writing in their hand. They're like, oh, I get it. Let's go play basketball or whatever it is that they're writing in your hand. The ability to understand what they're writing in your hand is called graph esthesia. What is graph? To write. What is esthesia? Sensation. What is an anesthetic then? An means without. Esthesia means to feel. So without feeling, what is an anesthetic used for? Well, when you're going in um, for surgery, right, you don't want to feel the knife cutting your whatever part of the body that they're trying to cut. So anesthesia is used to stop the sensation of feeling. So graph Esthesia. This one is two point discrimination, ability to distinguish between two points. This one is vibration. This one is proprioception. This was pain, temperature, and crude. Oops, crude touch. Why do I say crude touch? because it's just touching, right? So the pathway for touch in general is through ST. The pathway for specifically distinguishing two points is DC. Got it? You memorized those two? So we already went through spinal thalamic. We went through posterior column. Let's just do a refresher. So spinal dorsal column actually has two parts to it. So how I like to remember these two parts is if I want to draw a man and I draw his head here and I draw his his legs here in the center and I extend his arms outward 
his arms and the information coming from his arms travel through cuneatus. So cunning, when you're cunning, you use your hands to help you to get things that you want, right? Gracilis, where do you find gracilis? It's in the legs, right? So you're graceful with slender legs. Fasciculus are just a bundles of um, tracks. So gracilis are bundles of tracks coming from the legs, that's sensory information. And fasciculus cuneatus is bundles of tracks coming from the hands and the arms. So what pathway is this? Remember, what were the three sensations or five sensations associated with posterior column? It was also known as DCML. Poor, very dumb, silly guy. What was P? Proprioception, V. Vibration, dumb. That was two-point discrimination. Silly, stereognosis, the ability to find your keys without looking, right? And then G, graphesthesia, somebody writing on your hand, you understanding exactly what they're writing without having to look at it. Spinal cerebellar, we already know. Spinal thalamic, what was that? That was Patsy, right? Pain, temperature, and crude touch. You don't have to distinguish between the two, just understand that they are spinal thalamic. They transmit information to your relay station for further transmission up into the brain. So spinal thalamic, Patsy, pain, temperature, pain, temperature, and crude touch, right? And then first order, second order, third order neurons, you just have to know that that represents sensory pathway. Spinal thalamic, here's what it looks like. And spinal thalamic, again, here's what it looks like, right? It just goes from the spine up to the thalamus and out to um, a relay station, or through the relay station someplace else. So spinal thalamic, you guys already know, DCML, this is for legs, this is for hands, make sure you know that, and these are just tracks that are part of this pathway. So what are the sensations carrying um, through this pathway? We have pain, not pain, temperature, that's the other one. This one is poor, very dumb, silly guy, so proprioception, vibration, and then two-point discrimination is your, your fine touch, right? And then silly and guy, stereognosis and graphesthesia are very specific points for this pathway. And so we got that, and then sensory homunculus just tells you or shows you, here we go, this is the DCML. And if it comes from the legs, it's called gracilis. If it comes from the hands, it's called cuneatus. So spinal cellular bellow, we already talked about this. This was balance coordination and unconscious proprioception. So these are all things that you guys should know already. DCML is poor, very dumb, silly guy. Go over it again. Gracilis from the legs, cuneatus from the hands. Spinal cerebellar, we already went over that several, several times, so you guys can review that, and we'll take a little break. So what, what was this for? Pain? What is this? Temperature? Oh, yep, yeah, temperature. What is this? Touch? What is this? Pressure, right? What is this? Chemical. 